There are four main steps to writing a literature review from start to finish. The first is developing the research question, then finding appropriate literature, then actually writing the literature review and editing and finalizing. And typically these steps can take a lot of time, just searching through the literature, making sure that you found all the papers that are necessary and that are relevant can take a lot of time. But in today's video, I'm going to be going through how to automate this process using AI. So if you want to learn how to write a literature review quickly using AI, then keep on watching. So the first step is defining a research question. And a research question is really important as it defines what the problem statement is, and it defines what the area of research is that you are going to be targeting in your literature review. It's really important that this research question is very clearly identified and clearly described as it will determine what the reader is expecting to read from you, and also determines what kind of literature and what kind of papers you are going to be looking for when you do your literature search. You need to make sure that your research question is searchable and it's tangible and it's something that exists within literature. So this is it's not something that you've just kind of plucked out of thin air, rather it's a topic that does exist. There are literature already that talks about it and has published about it and you are there to kind of compile that information and bring it together to write a review. Now traditionally what you would do is you'd go to a platform like PubMed, like Google Scholar, and you just search through loads of different topics and try to read as many papers as possible to find that gap, to identify what is missing, to identify sort of what the literature is saying and to find all the information that you need to bring it together to write. However, in this day and age, there is something that we can use that can help and support us. And in today's video, I'm going to be speaking about the platform Site.ai. And this is an AI powered platform that will actually help you more efficiently come towards writing your literature review. So with Sites, what you're able to do is ask a question based on your research or your research interests, and you can get answers that are backed by actual research papers and actual citations. So this assistant is like an AI powered research partner. So essentially helping you do the research that you would have taken you hours and hours to do traditionally. The key aspect of ensuring that your research question is a good one is that it con it contributes to the existing body of knowledge in your field. So what you can do to help you with this is to use Site Assistant. Now, the Site Assistant allows you to ask a number of different questions. And a question that I've asked here is to suggest some ideas for a research question in the field of IQ Gap 1 and the cell cortex. So I just want to do a bit of brainstorming, figure out if there are any papers or any literature that I've missed out on maybe or questions I may not have considered and assistant here by sites does a really good job of not only giving you those examples but also making sure to back up all the answers with real and true uh, citations that you can check and and ensure that is actually correct so here you can see there are 10 different questions that they've given me and these are all potential questions within the research field and from here, I'm able to think about whether or not these questions could be relevant. I can assess them, do a bit more research, and I can also take a look at the citations that it is providing me for each one of these. Um, and on the side here, you can see that you can follow that citation and see the full context from where they've got that bit of information from. So for each citation, it has the number of publications that cite these works. They also have the number of supporting citations and they also have the number of uh, mentioning citations for this work. And then it also have the number of contrasting citations. So it allows you to see whether this citation can be trusted and whether it's, it's a citation that is able to be used within your reviews. And then you can form a dashboard, which is a collection of all the papers that you want to save within one particular topic. So now that you've identified what your research question is, the second part is to find appropriate literature. So now you need to do a comprehensive literature search. And what this involves is you go into different databases and you going to look at different journals and different books, websites, speaking to people, trying to find as much literature as possible to back up, to support, to defend your arguments, but also things that can help you critique and things that can help you analyze what your kind of research area is in more depth. For this, it's really important that you have a very in-depth and very precise search strategy. So make sure that you've identified what your keywords are. When you've got this research question, you need to find like the five 
I guess, five keywords, I would say, and use those keywords to search for more literature. You can also narrow it down by date, uh, published, so when those papers are published, um, and also by title, the, the words that you've used within the title or the abstract, and also the authors too. And again, you can use site.ai to help you with this process, and this is how. Now for the second step where you're finding literature, what you can do is change the assistant settings a little bit. So firstly, you can change settings so that you're always asking for references, which is really good as it means that you're always backing up all the statements with a paper that you can go and check up. You can also select um, specific journals that you want to look through or even your dashboard to make sure that everything that is given you is from the papers that you've selected only. You can change the referencing style, how many publications you want to consult, which means how many you want it to look through in order to give you an answer. Um, and then you can apply this. So the settings can be really tailored for you so you're able to pull out the best possible results. One of the questions I've asked here are, what are some limitations of the IQ gap and cell cortex research? And the reason why I've asked this is because I want to try to find out some limitations and some kind of weaknesses in the current studies so that that can be a paper that I might pull out and use as my critical discussion. And here it's kind of pulling out a few um, references and giving me the, the reason why they've discussed it and some kind of justifications for this particular answer. The third part you're coming to now is outlining and actually writing the literature review. So you've done your literature search, you've identified all the papers that you want to include, and now you're coming to the part where you're actually about to write. But before you write, what you need to do is develop an outline. And this is essentially a plan, which what tells you where you are going to include all the different bits of information. And um, it might give you some subheadings, some subtitles, uh, different sections and paragraphs, just to kind of give you an idea and scope of what is going to be contained within this literature review. A review can be anything from a thousand words to you know 5,000 words. So it's really important that you're summarizing and making sure that you know what's coming where and that you can kind of have a good organization structure that can be followed well when read. When reading, one thing that's really important is that you're kind of documenting it at the same time. So you've identified a paper and you need to write down a few points about that paper. So why is it important? Are there any limitations? Are there any interesting things to note? Are there any critical analysis that you think could be useful to add into your literature review? Because what happens is later on when you come to write, uh, it's you've kind of got that collated list of all the literature that you've read and why it's important and kind of where you're going to add it. So when you're generating this outline, you're able to put all of these papers in its kind of correct places. Think about the structure in a few different ways. Uh, you might want to structure it thematically if your uh, review has a number of different themes. You might want to structure it chronologically, so based on time, or even theoretically. Again, this all depends on what your topic is and your research area is, but all of these are different structures that you can use. Site.ai is really useful here also as it does help to generate a draft outline for you that you can then use to begin planning what your review might actually look like. So for this third step, I'm going to be generating an outline in order to start to plan and start to write my literature review. So what you can do with the assistant by site is you can actually ask it to provide you for an outline for a literature review. I've said 4,000 words, for example, with the specific topic. And as you can see, it's composing this result and it's basing it on 10 results, which means it's basing it on 10 research papers that it's looking through. And it's giving me this kind of nice breakdown that I can use to begin my out outline and begin planning the essay. And once you do begin writing, one of the things that you want to think about is finding competing evidence for your critical discussion points. And what you can do here is ask the assistant by site to find you some, some competing evidence and you can just copy and paste the paragraph that you've written about the one, the paragraph that you want to find the evidence for. And as you can see here, again, it's composing my responses based off of the number of the results that I've asked it to. So I've said 10, you can change this and make it more or less. Um, and then it's giving you a kind of like response for competing evidence and it's also going to give me the references that I can cite along with it. Remember, this isn't for just copying and pasting, rather it's for you to use it as a baseline and use it as kind of assisting you for the research and then you can go and do your own reading and make sure that you understand it fully before incorporating it within your literature review. And last but most definitely not least is the editing. So when you've written everything, you now need to go back and proofread. 
And this will just make sure that your writing is cohesive, it's coherent, it flows, it sounds academic, um, and it's not kind of a riddle of jargon or words that maybe an academic reader won't understand. And most importantly, I think for a literature review, you need to make sure that your arguments flow and that your arguments are backed up with the most appropriate citations and references to show that you understand and that you've been able to pull out from the literature uh, what you are actually talking about. And you also want to give it a final check through. So, you know, you've done this, you kind of broken this whole process up into quite a few parts. And from part one to this final part, it, it's probably been, you know, a few days, a few weeks, maybe even months. So, you know, going back to step one and making sure that you've read uh, your papers all over again, that you understand them, what you're including in your literature review, and then you've actually read the literature review from the start to the end to ensure that it flows correctly and to ensure that from an outsider's perspective, it makes sense. And last but not least, you are now finishing your writing and your editing and making sure that it all sounds good. One of the things that you might want to do here with Assistant by Sight is to rewrite certain sentences or certain sections in order to make it more concise or to make it sound more academic, especially if English is not your native language. So one of the things I've done here is I've input my abstract and I've said just make it sound a little bit more concise and like reduce the word count. And as you can see here, the response has been composed and it is a lot shorter than what I provided it with. Now, again, I wouldn't copy and paste this. What I would do is I'll take this as a kind of baseline and make sure that it still makes sense for me and then use this to support my editing the second time around. If you want to get access to site.ai, I, I think this is a really cool tool to use. One of my favorites that I've actually tried out and played around with. Um, if you want to get access to it for the monthly plan, it's only £14.13 per month. And this gives you unlimited access uh, to all its tools and resources. Um, and then if you want the yearly plan, it's only £8.48 per month. And again, like I said, this allows you to use all the features that I've mentioned today. And I think it's a really amazing assistant that not only saves you so much time, and also helps you with understanding different parts of research that you may not have understood with your initial read. If you are writing a literature review soon, then do let me know and I'm excited to know whether or not you've tried site.ai and whether or not it's been helpful to you and helped you with the process of actually finding literature and outlining and editing. Um, if you like this video and want to see more like this, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more from me and I'll see you in my next video.